Hey, welcome to the Tech Capital of the World. My name is Bobby Davis here in Cartnersville, North Carolina. I'm the CEO and founder of Coder Foundry. And Kevin, I think we have a show that's going to help a lot of people today because um, we see this common mistake over and over again. That's the plan. That's the plan. Yeah. That's, that's, what, that's what we're here to talk about. <laughs> so, um, you know, and it, I think it's I think it's important that why people understand why they're getting what we call the soft note. Like you build a portfolio yeah. and then they look at it and they're like, man, no one's calling me back. What's up? We do see this a lot, don't we? We see people that yeah, say like, I followed all of your steps. Like, why is, why is it not happening for me? And it's like right. nine times out of 10 without even looking, we're like, mm, we, we have an idea. It's right. maybe your apps. <laughs> it's maybe your apps. And then we look and so, it kind of confirms that. So we experience this ourselves too. Sometimes we, we talk to people that are experts in a space that we're not experts in. And we say, Hey, here's what we're doing. And then they go, yeah. You need to yeah. change that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that, uh, you know, it's right. like, yeah. 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 And, exactly. and then because people from like that have like us that have out, out there trying to get students jobs and trying to like look at it and then trying to look at why they get rejected and stuff like that. We can tell you the things that happen because we see it on a macro scale. You're looking at the right. micro scale, looking at your portfolio and like, oh, it must be something about me. It must be that I'm, you know, the society doesn't want me to get a job. The universe is against me. You know, like all of these kind of external factors you blame it on when there's an easy fix for this. I would say not necessarily easy, but it's known, quantifiable and something you can do. Right. You right. got to code it up, but right. like you can it's, do it. It's not easy in terms of effort. It takes effort to right. do these things, but it's easy yeah. in terms of knowing. It's no, it's knowable. No, Knowing what to do. Like what yeah. should we do? Yeah. So basically what we're talking about is when we look at portfolios, we do a lot of portfolio reviews here. We work with students and with our experience. And when we're building things out at Coder Foundry here, when we're looking at developer portfolios for students in our cohort, um, we build projects with a purpose, right? Not projects that were fun to build. Like we have a reason that we build all these projects. And what we're trying to do is we're taking a purely marketing approach to this. We want to build a portfolio that converts like, a portfolio that can get you an interview and then you win the interview and you get a job. So um, a lot of times when people look at other coding sites or whatever, it's like, hey, build this fun project. Hey, build this fun thing. This is great. Right. This will be easy. It's fun. You know, and like and the, and the whole goal is to build something fun. I think one of the mistakes we see in coding education is people think that if we don't build something fun, the student will lose interest and not do it. Whereas right. we come at from a different thing and say, hey, let's learn to code. Let's build something that will actually get you a job so you can get the job. So coding in itself is fun. So I think it's just as fun to build some of our projects as it is to build, you know, a bad project like a Pokédex, you know. Right. So, and that's kind of one know. of the things that we kind of want to touch on is the amount of effort that it takes to build. Let's just take a Pokédex, right? We're going to talk about this. Yeah. But the amount of effort yeah. and knowledge that it takes to build a Pokédex is the same amount of knowledge and effort it takes to build one of these other apps we're going to talk about. It's just that right. when you look at the final product, one of them we think works better on a portfolio than another. One converts, one doesn't. Right. And so if you take the advertising approach, we can have, or even a YouTube card approach, you know, whatever you want to do, you know, the A-B test things and you run right. an ad and hey, the ad's not converting. Well, we could still run that ad and just pound our fist against the wall or we change <laughs> right. it. Right. You know, and so what we do is we try to change it. We need something that converts. And so you need a portfolio that works for you. So this isn't a reflection on you as a developer. It's just that you built the wrong things. And now we want you to come back and build the right things. Now, one of the things that, um, hey, how can I trick my wife into wanting to move to Charlotte? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, Luke. Um, I don't know about romantic spots. Um, yeah, there's lots of cool things in Charlotte, though. Lots of uh, there is lots of cool things to do but... in downtown. The, I don't know if the NASCAR museum would be one of those <laughs> those romantic spots. So, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not. Depends. Yeah. It depends where you're moving from, too. Okay, that's yeah, thing. exactly. Um, you might be moving from somewhere that's way more interesting. But yeah, <laughs> thanks for the super chat, by the way. Yeah, thank you. But Charlotte's a nice city, that's for sure. So it is. It's definitely it nice. is. Yeah, it is nice. It's very, uh, it's green. If you're not coming from a green place, it's a very green place. So, so we'll give you a chance to ask questions later um, in a few minutes here. So just go ahead and Kevin will try to give them up here. Um, yeah, if you want a super chat, you can do it at any time. So one of the things that we want to talk about is let's identify 
some bad projects that we see a lot. So yeah. this isn't like yep. we saw this project once and we marked it as bad. So don't do this. This is what we see, right. we see a bunch commonly of yeah. from multiple programs, multiple Udemy sites. And, let's, um, and like they're building kinda, a lot. Before we kind of name check them too, what, let's, t let's talk about what we're not saying with these. We're not saying don't build these. Right. This is this is kind of an important dis dif differentiation. People are like, well, yeah. how am I supposed to learn? I need to build let's tic tac toe, right. right? Let's I need to build tic tac toe. Yeah. It's like it's a the logic part of it is interesting. What we're saying is here we need to differentiate. When you've built something, you need to ask the question, is that good enough to put on my portfolio? Right. That's what we're talking about here. We're talking about portfolio worthy yeah. applications. Um, not necessarily just should you build some of these things. Should you build them? Maybe some of these. Um, yeah. Maybe not all of them, but some of them, sure. I mean, if you build the Pokédex, you're obviously hitting an API. That's a good thing to learn. That's good practice. All we're saying is change the API. Like, get a better API and build a different right. project. Right. And we've we're going to give you bad ideas and good ideas. That's what we guess yeah, how we're going to kind of tackle this. So right. what's, what's, what's another bad idea? We've talked about Pokédex and... Um, and so... We saw one the other day, and we know this is popular with a lot of, uh, we're not going to name check the site that builds this, but like Snake Game, we saw it on one of the proposed reviews last week, and I would see this quite a bit, yeah. and it's because it comes from, and we're not saying they're bad, I could say we're not name checking someone else, but Snake Game in of itself, unless you're interviewing for a game job, if you're interviewing for a business job, which most of us are, I would even argue it's as not a, going to convert, but even as a game developer, as a game you need developer. to build Unity. Yeah. yeah, you need to build Unity. Yeah. So I would put this into the category of simple games, right? Snake being one of yeah. them, Tic-Tac-Toe right. being another, and like right. the dice rolling game we've seen. Like there's, there's a bunch of these that are these simplified games that are not good enough to get a game job, but they're also off topic for a web dev job and not good enough for a web dev portfolio. They're just, they no. feel a little bit out of place. They're good, good for learning because the logic part of them is interesting. Right. Right. You know, so like, so like blackjack, dice rollers, snake game, Pokédex, tic tac toe. We even saw tic tac toe the other day that didn't even have a like an AI component to it. So like at the bare bare <laughs> minimum, if you're going to build tic tac toe, it's got to be have an AI component to it. You know, um, something right. like that. And right, you know, if you build, I don't know, Signal R and and cobble together a two player networking game. I mean, then you're you're getting closer to like someone showing people what you can do. Right. But again, it's a different problem that most people aren't solving in the business world. They're not really making a chat app or a, or anything like that. So you might as well make a chat app if you're going to go down the single R road because that's something more likely that you might see. Right. But even those problems are solved by Slack. They're solved by Teams. They're solved by Hangouts. There's no one's ever typically not building that. Even though we do have a customer that we did um, help build one for. So right. it's a different, different right. scenario. So um, Guitar so, Jams in chat mentioned the bug tracker. We'll get to the bug yep. tracker in a minute because yeah. it's kind of like, and we'll talk about why, what that is versus the other, the other apps we're talking about today. Yeah, there's we, two, there two a, classes, two classes of projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and we'll, so, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that, definitely. So we're talking about, as a web developer, we're talking about mainly right now, front end projects that are vanilla JavaScript or some kind of JavaScript typically doesn't have a back end, but could have an API. Um, the other thing is we would simulate the back end with local storage. So if you need a database, then you should be looking at how do I do this in local storage? And that's where some of the, the, the apps take advantage of this that we we're going to talk about here in a second. Right, right. So go about a couple of other other like the, what we consider not not the best apps to put on your portfolio. Um, yeah. So we have we have listed an illogical app. So what's, what's an yeah, illogical we, app? <laughs> so sometimes we'll review a portfolio and we'll look at the app and we'll go, what does this do? I don't even know what it, what it does right. or what the problem it solves. And so here's your test. If you walk up on the street and you show someone your app and they ask you, what does it does? What does this do? What is it? Yeah. Then it's a bad app. If you show your mom and she's like, I don't understand what this is. Like, what's it supposed to do? Right. Or if it's not clearly solving a problem that's known to a lot of people, it's just a bad app. S you know, save your time, build something else. Again, the um, same amount of effort. is more well known. Yeah. Exactly. Same amount of effort, same amount of knowledge, same skill set, but you're going to build something else that does fit right. that criteria that people do recognize and do understand. Right. Right. Um, and so like, if you're trying to invent your own app, okay, and then it, it comes across as illogical, 
build something else that's well known to people. It'll convert better than your whatever passion app is, and, and we don't know what it does. We have a hard time figuring seeing it. I mean, we've seen these in portfolio reviews, or we'll just move on. Like, I don't know what that does. What is it? What's it doing? Right. What's it trying to do? I mean, like, I don't understand. Yeah. So. Yep. yep. I think that's the um, other other category. And th and then one of the well, the last one was like the meme generator. We've seen some of those, or yeah. something that's like a little bit. I don't know what it is. It does. It has one function, and it's okay in that sense. But its one function is just kind of weak. You click a button, and it just and it makes a picture. It just makes a picture. Yeah. It's just. It, yeah. I don't know. It just doesn't feel strong enough. And another thing too is like you know if you're in a certain demographic, and I'm probably in the demographic, and maybe I may skew older. Like we look at um, memes now. The people I play Destiny with are all under thirty, and they're like. They have a whole meme channel on their Discord channel. It's like constant, you know, like that. And that's their form of pop culture and humor. And they like it. Right. But when you're interviewing, people can see that and go, I don't know. What's it do? Like it just, yeah, it yeah. just puts a title on yeah. top of a picture. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. If, 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 you know? it hits, if, if it hits, if it hits the target audience, it's great. If it misses, it's yeah. a real far miss. Yeah. You're just not going to understand yeah. it. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's our kind of our, our nutshell of like what we do. Now, here's what we do at Coder Foundry, and I want to let you into the secret. So we're actually going to show you a Coder Foundry um, template that we build during the cohorts, whether you go self-paced or online. We build these templates because not only do we need to build the app, we need to show it off as well. So like there's some other components that you need to put right. around that. Right. Um, so we're gonna, what we're going to do then, is we're kind of going to give you five ideas. One of them is going to be like a code of anyone, the other ones aren't going to be. So they're not all going to yeah. be the same thing. Um, just, just so you know, the first one's going to be that way. The rest of them, we're going to give yeah. you the ideas. Yeah. So um, again, they all need to be published. Yep. And if you have a login for these, you need to automatically log people in. Don't require them to register or anything like that. They're just not going to do it. Yep. And so most and of then, these, you shouldn't need that. You, right. For what we're going to be know. talking about, you shouldn't need, yeah. we're not talking about adding a back end on these things. We're talking about these being mainly front-end apps. Yeah. Um, and so these front-end apps are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's pretty much the tech stack that we're talking about. Yep. So you don't need Node. You don't necessarily need Vue or any kind of templating engine. It's just that you're building this straight up with CSS. So our I'm first one we want to show, I guess, what were you going to say? I was just going to say, and what we're talking about here is that, that you touched on this a little bit, but that second tier of project, what we your yeah. portfolio should have, if, if you're going for full stack, should have two tiers of projects, we think. Should have this like yeah. this front end kind of focused project. Plus, you should have a what we've talked about a flagship project like a bug track. Yeah. So like something that track. is full stack that shows everything. But if you just have one project on your portfolio like a bug tracker, it's almost like it's almost not enough. You need to just have some other things, and these are the other things that we're talking about. Right. Right. So the first one we've seen, and uh, people like this. The reason we built it is an actual coding challenge given out to students from um, that we've seen in the wild so that we started doing it like, but then once we built it, we're like, oh, that's a cool app. And then people see it and they're like, okay, it solves a business problem. People can plug their own information into it and get the result they're looking for. So they can immediately verify it by using the app. So it makes it those two things. And it makes you look like you can solve more complex problems than Pokedex. Pokedex comes across as juvenile and you can't solve complex problems even though you call an api you got to get jason back you know, all those things yeah, the technology really is cool yeah. yeah yeah it's just that how it's packaged people just don't respect that project yep. so but they respect this one and uh let's look at a um, mortgage calculator so this is what you're going to see here is a student's uh a code founder student graduated i don't know last year or something like that he's out he's out working now yep. um and so this is our template. So notice a couple of things right away. Um, it has a landing page and he's branded it. Now you might not like his logo, but it kind of works. You know, it's simple, but it, it works. And so he he branded his mortgage as mortgage manager. So he branded it, gave its own unique name. You could do this as the car loan app. You could do it as anything. Um, we make fun of it and we call it loan shark in ours. I mean, that's kind of what we do, but we encourage students when you build Loan Shark at the course that they brand it separately of what we do. And yep. so that's one of the requirements is that brand app, build a logo, and we could put links in here. We use Canva here in the in the course where you can build these things or you can 
whip out Photoshop and make your own if you're good at that. So notice right here, he's got a simple landing page and it tells it what's it built with. The program was made using JavaScript. He used jQuery at this time and Bootstrap 4 that tells you that he's been around for a minute. It's because we don't even do jQuery anymore. So um, well, Bootstrap 4, we're on Bootstrap 5 now, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> now we're on 5. So let's go to the app and look at what it does. So when you go here, you can enter in a loan, you can enter in the terms and an interest rate. So we'll do yeah, 200,000, a little mortgage here. We're giving me a high interest rate. They keep going up. Yeah, it's going up anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they currently are. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Four, five. I don't know. They keep going yeah, up. Yeah, so it calculates the payment, and then it calculates the total principal, which is your loan amount. And then it calculates the total interest, and then you can see the total cost of the loan. And then we run out the amortization schedule down here. So it runs it out for you know 15 years or whatever that is. 180 payments yep. and it ends at zero. Kind of cool. Yep. So simple app, but I have seen this where people like, and then it'll convert. In other words, like they'll say, Oh, that's cool. I like that. And they'll say, Hey, put my car loan in there, you know, and stuff like that. Right. And this, they put their the car loan in there. Exactly. They just want to check it, in. you know? So, you know, yep. and, and they can put that in there. And so I've seen this convert even in the last couple of weeks that people really like this app. Um, and it's easy to demo, it's easy to use, and it's instantly verifiable because they can put their own information in there. And um, there you go, your $700 a month payment on your $40,000 car. Whew, that's expensive. <laughs> yeah. That is expensive. That's what falls. Even at 2%. Yeah. So, but we, that, we took that, it one step further here. Like it, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You're paying a grand. Yeah. It's like, so That's crazy, but yeah. Um, so, th so this thing has a, a few other features too. Not just doesn't just have the app. You saw it has a home page. Yep. That was one thing, and it had the app. But then we also encourage people to do these other things too. This see the yeah. code page. So, so we're using a, a plugin here called Prism, and Prism allows you to show the code that you're doing. And then we we say, hey, break this out into steps. If your app has a bunch of steps, and write it up like you would documentation and show the code. And that way they don't is... have to go to GitHub necessarily to get it. They can go read it right away. It's super easy for them to do it. And um, very, very strong when it, when it does it. Yeah, because the point here is to show somebody that you can make this app, right? It's not, the app is secondary to you making the app. So if you can show yeah. that you've created the app and the code kind of behind it and what your, what your thinking was and your logic and your different sections in here, that, this, is, this is kind of, this is powerful. Yeah, it's very powerful. And of course, the next link takes you directly to the GitHub that it would be at. So yep. now if you want to keep your GitHub private, then this see the code thing works. You can you can keep your GitHub private and then you can also do that. And then we'd link it right back to your developer portfolio. And this is Steven, who's done a great job. He lives in Utah. And um, and you, you can go look at his portfolio. So let's yep. look at his portfolio, how this is repped out on his portfolio. And so you can see here he's, he's built this out on his own. Um, and you can see down, we're going down the project section. You see, he's got his flagship at the top here. He's got a bug tracker, obviously he came to Coder Foundry. He's got a blog and then he has one that he built on his own, which yeah. was kind of cool. Yeah. A scheduling system for um, physical therapy. I think that's where he came from before he came to Coder Foundry. Right, so he's so familiar with this, this problem. Domain. Yeah. 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 Understood. Yep. And then he's got the lesser projects down here. And then you can see right there, he's got a mortgage cap right there. Yep, and that's the one he wants them to see left hand at the top. And you notice they're all branded. Kind of cool. Yeah. Definitely. And that's how you Definitely convert someone yeah, into a job and he's working and it just works. So the next one that we, that we're going to build in a future cohort, we actually are not going to show it today, but we're going to go ahead and give out the idea. We've built this out ourselves. We're still refining it. Um, but like, um, is weather mashup and weather mashup is takes a weather API like open weather API and then we match it with Spotify API and then we also matched it with unsplash API so that <laughs> when you show the weather app you got the weather for your location and whatever it is yep. the background shows a picture based on the current weather then it plays a song based on the current weather. So you can like open up your app and if it's raining, you'll see a raining picture in the background. And then by the side, you'll see something like purple rain from Prince. 
<laughs> you know, my favorites when we looked it up was whiskey and rain. You know, it's like the country <laughs> song. You know, okay, that. that's funny. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, so, but like, um, and then you can take that one step further where people could pick their own playlists for the different weather events or something like that. Or right. we just, or you could just curate it for them and give them 20 solutions. So those are three ways. From, so from a technology perspective, this is doing a couple of things. It's firstly showing that you can consume an API. That's that's one thing, which you'll see yeah. kind of a, a few of these ideas we're going to give you do consume APIs. But this one yep. actually mashes two together as well. So you're consuming multiple yeah. APIs into a single front right. end app. Oh, right. Cool. Now, the other thing that we like about Weather Mashup that we're going to do is uh, we'll eventually build this out in the self course and the cohort, but it also will end up being a Chrome extension. So like you can go to Chrome and just click on it and then the weather comes up. But you also could run it as a full-fledged app. It's your choice, how you want to do it. Um, but the Chrome extension makes it, oh, that's kind of cool. Now I can install it here and just, bam, click on it. I can see the weather, hear a song that's related to it and see the image change. So pretty still JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and then we've added a little more JavaScript using the Fetch API to pull back um, multiple APIs and, and pull them together and mash them up into one kind of unique app. Um, I have not seen this app anywhere other than from us. So it is it is unique. So if you went out and built it right now, you'd probably be the first person to do it. Yeah, we haven't um, seen probably, this. Yeah, probably later in the year, um, we'll start teaching it at the cohorts here. Um, and then also push it into the self paced course later in the year. We, we have a version but, of this kind of built out, don't we? It's just not published. Yeah. Yeah, we just haven't posted it yet. So there's some things I still want personally, you know, I have I have like high standards. So like first <laughs> right. I want to like there's a couple of things I want to fix on it. But yeah. I think for the most part, it's really, really cool. It's really, 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 really cool. And okay. it would show well, too. So we take a popular topic yeah. that everyone understands weather yep. and then we put a little twist on it. And they're like, oh, I never thought of that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that shows creativity. But you're also still solving a problem. And yet in a Chrome extension, now it's usable. Like they can install their Chrome extension and check the weather. We all have weather apps that we check all the time. And yes, it's on our phone. And yes, you can type in weather right now and get the Google plugin right in search. How, how, how much of a learning curve is there with making it a Chrome extension? Is that It's easy. Is that easy? Okay. It's, it's actually really easy. Like it's okay. not even the hard part of this at all. Like you just, if you, if you go, we'll teach people how to do it, but it's right. actually very, very That's easy. That's the easy part. Okay, interesting. Yeah, the Chrome makes that super easy to do. And you can yep. publish it right to the Chrome store. And then the thing is, if you have it in the Chrome store, then suddenly you have proof this work, don't you? Yeah. proof of work. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you go out to the Chrome store and download it and look at it. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. cool. You're like, that's my, that's my app there. That's kind of cool. It's in the Chrome store. That's, that's cool. Okay. So our third app on our list. Um, so this is another new app that we're building. Um, it's called the conversion app. And what we want you to do there is convert things from say, kilometers to miles if you're in the u.s or if you're in anywhere else on the planet maybe it's like <laughs> you know miles to kilometers yeah you're trying to figure something out so like you know um but you can't just stop there you could do fahrenheit to celsius you could do grams to pounds or things like that we also thought about converting um bitcoin to dollars or bitcoins to british pounds or whatever it is yeah and you'd have to implement a coin api to get the current price of Bitcoin and then push that into um, a conversion to dollars or something like that. Yeah, so, which um, grab from here. Um, and we've looked at the pricing here and you can do this for free. If you click on pricing, um, there's a free version where you can do a hundred daily requests. So if you beat a hundred daily requests, people going to your sample app, you're gonna get Right, you're, you're doing something hired. right. Yeah, exactly, doing something hundred right. people a day or a hundred requests for this thing. Yeah, definitely you're doing something right. Right, um, so, so this you'd be fine. So this kind of conversion app is really, there's there's really two kinds of this. There's one that uses something static, like yeah. kilometers to miles. It's always using a constant, right? right? It's always static. Right. And then there is a version where you could use an API to do some kind of right. conversion, like a monetary right. conversion or something that's non-static. Right. Yeah, so you could definitely do a, a currency conversion to all the different types, you know, like dollars to whatever or, yep. you know, whatever the other currencies are, rubles to something yep. else, you know, yep. something like that. Yep. But like... Uh, all of those things show a business problem that it solves in the conversion app. And then what you can do in your app is you could like give them a selector that they could pick the conversion app they want to run. So your app would have maybe one to X number of conversions that it right. does. So it's all in one conversion app. 
and you build all of these algorithms out in JavaScript and you could have 10 or 20 or 30 of them. And then they just, the user picks the one they want, the UI changes, they type in the information and bam, the conversion takes place. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, because the logic and the math here is not overly complex. You can research that and figure all that out, no matter what yes. you're converting from and to. No as long as what. they're comparable units, the, the math yeah. part's easy. You're just coding that part up. It's not overly difficult. But you can think of all the metric conversions to the US-based system. There's a lot of those. I mean, like grams and, you know, that yeah. kind of stuff. Because for whatever reason, yeah, it seems like it, you know. Um, the rest of the world has moved on. Base 10, we're still in base whatever for whatever. Like, whatever. You know. Like we make it up as we go, you know. So like we're, you know. So I think that's, I think that's pretty good. You can do, obviously, speed you know, miles per hour to kilometers per hour. You could do knots, you know, things like that, nautical knots to um, um, some other kind of speed metric. So you can figure out how fast do submarines really travel underwater? You know, like right. how fast do they go? Right. Um, those kind of things. And I think that's a super interesting app that still solves a, a problem, a business type problem, because people have to convert things all the time to different units of measure or weight. And I think it will show very, very well. Yep. Okay. So about number four then, what's our fourth? So number four, we do come off across this and um, we know that people like pop culture things. So that's the reason they build Pokédex, but we thought, okay, let's build something a little bit different. Okay. I know we said simple games are bad, but now we're going to pull it in to say, let's build something that a wide audience can understand. And it doesn't come across as kitty as tic-tac-toe or whatever. And so we think you could take something like the movie um, API. Now we do this as building a full-fledged um, kind of Netflix clone in, in C Sharp and NBC, yep. but there's another app you could build here that would require you just to consume the API in um, JavaScript and HTML and not build a clone, but make something a little bit different. And so we think that uh, you could build a trivia app. And so like you could build something like bring in the movies, and show a movie or show four movies and then you have to rank them in order of release or you could do things like given the all the information here in this api you could show four christopher nolan movies and rank them by um how much money they made in the box office you know so you could right. have a box office api you could have you know a release trivia game you know which one of these movies which one came first um that kind of thing you could do things like because you have the actors you could do you know, something like a Kevin Bacon type thing, you know, or, you know, you show an actor, you know, Keanu Reeves and which of these movies was he in or something like that. Pick the one he, he, he was in, um, that kind of thing. Yeah, so there's this, a lot this API of, is uh, really deep. It, it, there's a lot yeah. of stuff in here. And it's got the it's images, release dates, all like the images you need. It's got everything. And, um, it's, it's really, 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 really cool. Yeah. So, there's, there's a lot of good stuff. So you could build a trivia game and again, a trivia game is movies are pretty much universal. They're m more widely suspect, re respected than other content like Pokédex. So like, so we're building a, a trivia game that they could sit there and just, you know, Hey, okay, I got four movies here, which, which was released first. And then you just play it here. You know, um, what was the most box office for Christopher Nolan movies? And you can show Inception, Interstellar, you know, the prestige and, you know, Tenet. You know which one made the most money you know and you're like oh, i don't know right it's a hard problem so, you know so uh, like um let me see diego here is asking if there's a list of apis i can use in my projects there is um you can go right here look i will put this in chat too so there is a list on github this public apis let me throw that in chat here in a second but this list here is super cool like you can look up like there's all these apis by category if you want a music yep. API, you can go look at all the music APIs. You want a book API, there's book APIs. There's there's yep. just about everything you can think of within here. There's there's tons and tons of stuff. Um, and so let's look at chat. let's look at the animal ones right now. So here's what we I can go look go straight on there. All right. So stay away from number three, daily cat facts, random dog <laughs> facts, random facts about dogs. That's not cool. I mean, like it's all I can tell you is that it's it's generally not well respected to put that people 
are uh, tired of seeing cat videos, you know, or maybe not. Maybe we love them. Kelly will send me a random dog. <laughs> that's my wife, a random dog puppy video. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you have to I send her a little heart back to say that you liked yeah, it. Exactly. Like, I, I loved it. Yes. <laughs> but that's kind of crazy. Um, so, but I think you can, if you look through here, find things that solve a business problem that's wide. So like yeah, movies adoption. are wide. Everyone has seen a movie in their lifetime. They know kind of what it is. And then especially in the U S here, we love movies and I'm sure it's the same hell all across the U S you could build something around this one. This would work adoption. That this would work like an adoption thing. This would totally work. You could show yeah. the, the top five adoptable dogs within a certain breed or something. I don't know what the API includes, yeah. but something like that. Yeah. You could find right. like all the, the, German shepherds that are around or something or whatever it is, like within yeah. a radius or something that could be kind of cool as an app. There's certain things you can yeah. do with this, but you're right. Like a random picture of a dog. Like, what do you do with that? Like I get yeah, it. You don't, I understand why it exists, but yeah, you can't make a business focused yeah. app out of that. Yeah. But pet finder and that kind of stuff is kind of interesting. So, yeah. but again, if you can't think of anything good in that category, what we're telling you is you love cats, you love dogs, move on. Pick something that is broad and wide that people will look at and go, oh, okay, I understand what you're trying to do there. Um, but yes, seen it, maybe. A trivia yeah, app have you seen it? it? Yeah, a trivia app, anything like that. Yep. You can go look at, um, I think Regal Cinemas has a broad set of trivia app games on movies. And, or, um, and you could go there and look at some of their apps and clone them, you know, by using the, uh, the DB API. I think that's pretty cool. Right. Um, you know. I think it's really, 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 a uh, really good app. So the first, the last one we have here, and this, so notice so we're going to keep this to five. We want you to build five of these really good ones, put them on your portfolio and then build a flagship. The five one is a good to-do list. Yeah. It's kind Not of funny because you would think like we're adding to-do lists because it's literally one of the first apps that people make. We're like to-do list. That sucks. That's a stupid idea. Yeah. Like, you have to build a to-do list. <laughs> to just get into Coder Foundry. Like we have like an <laughs> right. app where you come at, you know, so right. they're very simple. And I see a bad to-do list or very minimal Simplistic, feature set of a to-do yeah. list. It's yeah. very, so where it's even not styled well, I'll see a, like a like a, like a single line at the top of the page, no description about what it does and an add button. And they just type something in and add and it adds it. And you add another one and it adds another one. And it's just like, it's, it's not very good. I mean, like, so you got to build this around an idea or a something. So, you know, well, so when, be, when we were talking about this, like yeah. one, one came to mind for me and we'll show that in a second, but sorry, you were going to yeah. say it'd be like, think about topics that you could do with a duty list. It could be a grocery app. It could be a task list of things, which is a very, you can get more creative than that sometimes. And then you could build something around recipes where it gets a little more complex. We do see in um, people getting coding challenges out, build a recipe app in NBC. Well, you could build one with just generic JavaScript. Yep. But the problem with the recipe app, it has multiple layers. So you have ingredients and steps and a recipe. So like those all three things together flow. So you could probably build all of those domains with vanilla JavaScript very easy and make a and come up with, I don't know, 50 or 60 recipes or just right. build it around Chinese food or just build it around Mexican food. Yep. And then they can add their own recipe right there if they want to. You can think so about think, a lot of apps being a to-do list. It's like the terminology to-do yeah. is like, oh man, another yeah. to-do list. Like and we've seen ones just called another to-do list. It's like, that's the wrong Which is a terrible it. name. It's, it's like, yeah. It's a terrible name, because, but I get it. Yeah. I get the irony there. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I get it. You're building another to-do list. But if you can think about it, it's just, it's a list of items that you, add to a list and check off. You need to think about another use case for that, like a shopping list, like a, um, a grocery list. Um, we had this yeah. idea, you could pull in an API with it too, like a food and grocery uh, API, yep. right? And you could say, tonight I wanna make like shepherd's pie and it would like pull in the grocery list for shepherd's pie into your list. And you could be like, oh, yeah. okay. And then when you're at the grocery store, you're on your mobile phone check and you're checking off. the items off your list. Now it's like, right. it's way more Useful. usable, but it's essentially just a to-do list, it's the same yeah. thing. And you're, you're m matching it up with a food API because we've looked at food APIs and pulled them in and you can just say, I want to make X and it, yeah. it'll come back with a shopping the list. list. Yep. Or you could take it to a whole other level and make just a really, really good to-do list <laughs> with some cool things on it. Like yeah. my friend ends and he doesn't know that yeah. I'm going to show his here and I'm sure he's not watching. He's asleep. He's in Japan. 
but I'll tell him about yeah. this tomorrow. <laughs> uh, yeah. But he made a really, really good to-do list that we did a review of a few weeks back when we we're looking at his yeah. portfolio. He just made a really, really good to-do list. Um, so I'll kind of demo it. So he made the basic functionality, right? Um, he made a couple of like, you just, you know, you add things to a list, I get it. Like you're adding mm -hmm. things on it. Just, it looks okay, right? Like it looks good. Um, but he has this little thing and it says, hey, there's two items in my list and zero prioritize items. That's one feature he added. So you can prioritize things so I can mark it and I can prioritize this item, right? On my mm -hmm. list. Um, I can show filtering too. I can show complete, incomplete, or just my prioritized items. Cool. And notice he paid attention to the UI of this. The UI is what sells this. Yeah. yeah. It really looks good, good, right? It looks good. This yeah. little call out. So if we mark this one as complete, I can filter that one just to show the complete items. And let's say I want to edit this. I can edit it. Um, so I can change that. So that works really well. But then like, I'm like, oh, this is cool. But then he also has the night and dark mode, which I like. It's cool. Yeah. Right? Cool feature. But then he added Probably this, which good. I thought was killer. Yeah. This is the part that really takes it over the top for me as a to-do list. So I can say, um, I'll put my, my name in if I can actually type. And I'll change this to be my uh, shopping list. So now, if I look, oh no, I'll change the color. I don't like that. We're like Coda Foundry Orange. So we'll come back to some of like this in a second. But now I have a list that's like, this is now my shopping list. And it says, hey, Kevin. <laughs> and I mm -hmm. have my list. Of my, my shopping list is cool. And then I have stats. Look, too. he pulled in stats. So completed items, items created. So if I have a long list, I can just come here and get a quick snapshot of my items here. It's very cool. Tells me when it was last edited, and then my list name down here. It just extended the idea past what what yeah. a normal to do list is, and then gamified it a little bit with the progress section. I just think it's really good. It's just a really good go. to do list. <laughs> so. And you can see how that's going to show better than just a single line edit with an add button with no explanation, you know? Right. So I think it's really, really cool. Yep. So that's what we do. We'll mark them down for you. We think you should build a mortgage calc for sure. That's our number yep. one yep. Um, that you should build. Uh, number two is our um, a, a mashup API app. We think weather, Spotify, and Unsplash is that we're building. You should probably build it too. It's really cool. Um, a conversion app, which we think is, again, solves a business problem, highly useful, will probably convert well when you show it to people. Um, and then if you want to go into pop culture, we think movies are wide enough to where it shows better than Pokédex, Star Wars, limited APIs, and things like that. I think this will show a lot better. And, and then finally, uh, if you build a to-do list, it's got to be great. Yeah, if you're going for the straight to-do to list, yeah, it's got to be really yeah. good. Bring or to the table. think about rebranding it into something else like a shopping list yeah. or something or something yeah. with an extension on it. Maybe maybe you pull in an API, maybe you don't, but don't think, don't just call it another to-do list. Like you yeah. can make a good to-do list. Dan has totally proved you can make a good version of a straight up to-do list. And all of these have to be styled well, and then all of them have to be published so someone can look at them and not just in GitHub. And that's the other thing we see people say, hey, go see the GitHub code. And they're just not going to pull it down. Even the most technical manager, and I have people on YouTube saying, I pull every GitHub repo I get down. I'm like, you're lying, dude. Like, quit and saying that, you? man. Why like, would you waste your time? Like, no one's doing that, man. Like, we've got more things to do. And then if you're showing an HR rep, they don't know how to pull it down from GitHub. <laughs> yeah. You can come to the GitHub link, they don't even know what they're looking at. And yeah. so if you show someone that's not technical, like an HR or a recruiter, a really cool app, you've ignited their imagination, you've given them something to show their client, something to sell, and it allows you to get more, more opportunities. So build great apps doesn't mean that you can't build these simple ones, but you've got to use those to learn and then come down and maybe tackle our five to our top five apps. Yeah, you've really got to look at what you ultimately put on your portfolio and ask the question. Yeah. Be, try and be as objective as you can and, and, and ask the question, is somebody going to hire me because this is a great app in itself? Don't think about yeah. the 40 hours it took you to create it or the, or the 100 hours it took you to like figure all this stuff yeah. out, learn it and put it together. You have to be objective and put that to one side and be like, is the end product worthy of somebody looking at and getting me a, a position? Right, and if, if you don't know the answer to that, it. ask someone that would know and they'll tell you. Yep. You know? Yep. Um, I also agree on 17 here. Yes. Uh, 
in integrations can be cool with to do yes. uh, to do apps too. So reminders, calendar integrations, push notifications. Yeah, there's a bunch of different technologies and things you can think about. Just past there's paid services that do this already now. You know, like right, Calendly right. and yep. all those things. Yep, definitely. Okay, let's do a few uh, questions or comments here to talk about. Uh, Colin says, snake game, yes, but networked with multiplayer, change the rules a bit, make the snake animated, keep high score, something new. Here's what I say, Colin. We have to be very careful because unless you're in for a gaming job, you got to understand we need to do business-focused things. That's why we say avoid it. you know. But we, we relented and put one of the gaming types in our top five, and the only reason is the the thing that it's built around movies in general. So movies in the U S are very popular and everyone knows movies are, you know? And so, you know, could you name the top five highest grossing Tom Cruise movies? <laughs> if you sit and talk about it, you're like, okay, that, that, okay. Right. Put it, that put be... it, right. Like putting them like a multiple choice, like putting them in order would be kind of interesting, right. wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. So, um, um let's see. So this wasn't really a question or a question or a comment, but we'll consider it as a, yeah, let's consider it as a question on an e-commerce website. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree with that one. It's a good idea. That leans more into the flagship side. So in e-commerce side goes to the flagship side. So for us, what we built currently at Cutter Foundry is bug tracker, blog, and then we have, we're currently right now doing an address book. And so the address book is a simpler app that we used to teach the basics of MVC. We put a little, twi a little spin on it, make some, Make it more than just an address book. Then we move to blog and then we move to bug tracker. So those are the three things that we're building right now. Those may change over time with us, but an e-commerce site would definitely go into the the bug, bug tracker realm where that's you know, that's something that you could show as a flagship project. Okay. Um this one just came in, but we'll talk about this too while we're talking about this budgeting app ideas. We, when we've done. we did that. We used to, we've, we've done that before in the past. We've, we've went away from budgeting because now we're doing a dress book, but it still, it remains a good idea. So <coughs> you can bring in like budgeting. Um, so you have income and outcome. So you have income and expenses. Um, you can use graphs to show kind of like how you're doing on a certain budget item. Um, you break it out by food, entertainment and categories, things like that. So we and we, you do. it was kind of a it became a really complex app too isn't it because we have multiple households as well where you were kind of yeah we did multiple household. households could, yeah which is more yeah. um, basically essentially a multi-tenant application it was kind of cool you had an yeah. admin and you had users so if you're the admin like you're the head of household and then you added users yeah. who had access to certain accounts and not others so you added um you know you had, it was a full stack app it was add authentication authorization everything in it right like it was yeah it was, yeah but you could make an easier version of that that's a simple Budgeting app too. Yeah, with just which, vanilla JavaScript. Exactly, sure. which I think works. Yeah. And again, the thing is, if you need persistence and you're doing front end apps, look at local storage as a way to do that. So that's another, if you want to write that down and go research it yourself, pretty easy to do. Um, Wordle was based on local storage, for example. Um, so <laughs> which it's is pretty why we're able to, to hack it and find all the answers. Yeah, exactly. It's pretty easy to do. <laughs> yeah, uh, which is funny. Uh, let's see. We did get a super chat here, but it didn't. Come okay, on, cool. Think Come here in a second. Off, and I really apologize for that. Um, we'll wait for it to appear. I don't, I'm not sure that it will. I'm not sure that it's going to re-trigger. Um, okay, that's fine. Thanks, you, Robert. But, uh, Robert, thank you. Thank you. And, thank you. and you're welcome. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming and hanging out. We, I'm glad it helped you out. Hopefully, it helps you out, and you can um, build these. Yeah. We do see people. I want to stress this. It's not a reflection on your talent. But like when you show these bad projects as your as the thing that you can do, it leads to what we call the soft no, which means that they look at your portfolio and they pass. And that's why your portfolio doesn't convert into interview opportunities. Think of this just like you would if you're marketing a, a service or you're trying to sell something and your ads aren't working, you would change them. So think about this. If your portfolio isn't converting, you need to change the apps that are on it because they're looking at it and they just think it's not good enough. And we don't think they're good enough either. Um, so pursue these other ideas and I think you'll see a lot more conversions coming your way. Cause no, make no mistake. You're selling something. You're selling you to a company and that's as simple as that. Right. 
Right, let's talk about this real quick. This, this is slightly on topic, but slightly off topic too. So I feel kind of uncomfortable to publish my app that I've been working on since September 2020 because I don't want people to steal my idea. Hmm. So you want to charge for it? So you have to put it thing. out there. I mean, what's, yeah, you have to put it out there. So the what's your goal? Yeah. 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 Exactly. So what's is your, your goal, goal to, to monetize this thing? Okay. Maybe. Or is your goal to get a job? You know, also, I, I firmly believe this, and I have no idea what your app does, but I think if your app is so unique that no one's ever thought of it, and it's a brand new, brand new, brand new idea, you need to look at it to see, would anyone steal it anyway? Because the good ideas have a market, which means there's probably already people selling in this market. Right. And if so, there isn't, you should question your idea. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have a market for your app, then maybe it's not a great app. I'm not saying that either way. Um, now. Will people steal your idea when you go to market with it and it makes money? 100% they will. So it's all about not building that, but execution. So if your goal is to make this into a company that you can earn a living on, then yeah, you don't need to publish it until you're ready to do that. All right, until it's ready to go to market. So that's called Minimal Viable Project or MVP. But if you're saying, I want a developer job, publish your app. Right. You know. I, I will say too, we throw out app ideas here all the time. We'll come up with things and yeah. we'll just we'll talk about them here because we also yeah. know that even if it is a good idea and there is a market for it, ninety nine point nine nine percent of people just won't build it. They won't They're build it. They're just not going to build it. Throwing it's the idea about, out it's there. It's all about execution. It's execution. And so, yep. Let me tell you two things. If you're if you're looking at this, the two problems you need to solve for any software or service idea: number one is customer acquisition. How am I going to get customers? And number two is customer retention. And then the third one is the in between those is your churn rate. Like, so like how many people leave my service versus how many do I get? And that churn rate has got to be as low as possible. So, so it's customer acquisition and customer retention. You solve those problems. Your app is the third wheel in that. And anyway, it doesn't matter what the service is necessarily. It's, can I sell it and can I keep them once they buy it? And that's what you have to solve. So the MBA there in 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> there you go uh ben's just clarifying that interest rates are currently 5.6 percent i'm guessing that's on a is that on a 30 year it must be on a 30 year right i'm guessing yeah for, for a mortgage yeah. Which, yeah that's yeah they're high we, they're going uh, up so you, you need to get into it now lock in ben up. the thing might be 15 percent <laughs> by next year so. exactly exactly um I don't know. We, we, we refinance at a good time. So it's like, it's good for us when it comes yeah. down and you own a house, the smart thing to do is just is refinance your, your loan. You'll save a fortune doing it. When those yeah, low exactly. rates, a 5% versus a 2% is a massive difference. It doesn't seem yeah. like a small number, but when you're paying it over 30 or 15 or 30 years, it's a lot of money. Yeah. So, so we haven't seen 5%, 5.6 mortgage rates in like, I don't know, eight, nine years, probably. It's been a minute. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah. And when your wife's had, in mortgage and she would know. Yeah. Yeah. When we had we yeah. had our older house in Ohio, we were paying like those rates. And it's been we've we've been down here for man, six or seven years now. So yeah. we obviously we financed that way before that too. So it's been a while. It's been a decade or so. Yeah. Yeah. And they've kept coming down and down and down. All good things come to an end, I guess. <laughs> there you go, exactly. Um, so Zach says, when you say MVCs, it's still acceptable to use the design patterns like MC with a V and use React in separate front end build. Does this still qualify as meeting MVC patterns? React is, um, you still have views. I mean, you're just using React to build the views. You're talking to a controller and you have a model. So it doesn't matter how you build the view itself. So React is the front end technology that builds those views. It doesn't matter what that is. So, um, now, if they have like Angular is MVC, but it's their own take on how it works. React may have something very similar, but in general, you have a view component, which is what the user sees. You have a back end component, which is some type of endpoint that it can talk to. That's a controller in our language, in our world. And then you typically have your database communicating via models to these to those controllers. And then that round trip happens. So it's still the same thing. Is it traditional NBC? I have to really look and see what React says it is. Just ask them what they think it is, what their pattern is. Okay. Uh, are we adding any big, another big project to the self? I think we're just going to redo the ones we have in .NET 6 right now. So that's what we're working on. Yeah. That's, that's what that's we're going to do now. That's, that's our goal. We still think these courses, these projects are relevant. So if you build these three projects, 
and you can talk about them, you're going to get hired. So like, I think that they still work until they, we think they don't work. Yep. Then we'll Trust change me, when, them. When, when, exactly when they're not going to work anymore. And we think that we're going we'll to switch them out. Change them, you know, switch them out to something else. Okay. So Winston wants to know, does how we code these projects matter? I always feel like my code is subpar, especially when seeing how well put together many of others project code looks. So maybe um, it can matter to some, some degree, but in general, put it out there. I mean, quit having, um, you know, quit comparing yourself to other people or go look at other people, learn from it and see if you can structure it better. Um, so this is why we recommend and why we teach patterns here because patterns enforces how you do things and therefore it makes your code look a lot better because you're following a pattern. Um, I follow the same kind of pattern in JavaScript projects. If you come here to Codify and you learn how I do it, I build a, basically I'll have three functions on any of these projects, regardless of how simple they are, because I'm trying to enforce a pattern because the project's never as simple as reverse a string. You know, it's never like, that's not the app, but I got one we still thing. Yeah. deploy a pattern to it. So I build a driver function for every JavaScript app that I build that pulls in whatever I need from the user interface. And this one function then calls the other functions that it needs to do. So let's say that I'm gathering input. I would build a, a, a thing called like get user input. And then um, I have a middleware piece, which is where my algorithm takes place. So in the case of reverse a string, I would have a function called reverse a string. And that would take a parameter of a string and return the reverse item back. And then I would make a third function that would display it how I wanted it to. And so that way, I, now I have separation of concerns. I have my gathering, my user input. I have my backend controller piece that does the logic, the business logic. And then I have a view piece where it's, it's pushing it out. So, and that's essentially how NBC works when they're rendering views on the server side. It passes it around to three different things. So that's kind of how we teach JavaScript. Right. So, and I think, the, so here's, here's what I would say too. So, Firstly, the most important thing is get it working, right? Then, yep. then think about refactoring it. Don't try and think yep. about what's the most elite, like one line way I can do this logic straight out of the gate. Just get it working. Then think about ways about how you can like refactor it to make it better. Yep. That would be, that'd be my advice. Uh, let's see if we can help uh, Ignacio here. It says, I'm thinking about doing a password keeper app, which provides a game uh, breaker feature. It says the game, game breaker feature. Configure a password builder so you can build your own pattern for passwords so you never forget. Sure. I like that's it. Good. I like it. I like it. I think that's cool. So I'm Solves guessing what you're saying with problem. that is it's like it's a word, then you put in two numbers, a special character, and then another word. Right? That would fit mm -hmm. the criteria of like most like, you know, uppercase, lowercase, special character, and number. But you remember the kind of pattern. That's interesting. Yeah. I like that. And it's, the pattern's unique to you, right? So you give it a configurable pattern and then it fills out the password according to that pattern. Cool. I like yep. it. I think it's good. Um, obviously, those are business-focused apps, right? Password managers are business-focused apps. Yeah, I man. use one. <laughs> Last pass. I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. I would be lost without it. All my passwords, yeah. I wanted 25 I characters know minimum. Like, yeah, I, have I don't, no I don't idea. know my passwords anymore. I have if no I idea. If I lost LastPass, last pass, I, I couldn't log in anything. I'd be in trouble. But yeah. I've seen those charts now where it's like, you know, a, an eight character password, even with all those criteria, can be broken in a certain amount of time. And it's in shorter seconds. than you think it is. It's shorter it's than you think it is. Yeah. You've got to get to like 12 or 13 characters with that same kind of criteria before you get right. to a point where it's like, now it takes years to force, to, to brute force that yeah. password. Um, that's where we need to be. Yeah, I'm, I've got mine set on like 20 something now. Like I'm just, mm -hmm. it should take millennia to break the password. Right. <laughs> right. That's what I want it to be. The entire Azure cloud to break it. So. <laughs> exactly. And we don't have to remember them. So yeah, I think it's a good business yeah. focus app for sure. Yeah. Uh, Ryan says, after learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, should you learn a framework? Skip that and learn C Sharp. So C Sharp and .NET is going to give you HP.NET, which is a framework. So the answer is I think is he's more talking about a front-end framework, though. I think he's talking about you want to learn a front-end framework, you can or... learn React, you can learn Angular, you can learn Vue. Then if you do those, the thing that you want on C Sharp is Web API at that point. So Web API is the framework for building apps with a front-end JavaScript framework like React, Vue, or Angular. And inside of Visual Studio, there's templates built in right, right there to do it with React and Angular. Yep. So 
And yeah, there are three options. You just check a box and you choose you just that. Check a box and, and like it's it's kind of built out for you. Out of the gate. Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, the Hanjay. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, I apologize if I'm not. But how's .NET six over Java and Python? So I'm going to tell you what I <laughs> you think. You have an opinion of this? Yeah, I have an opinion. And I'm going to separate these in two camps. Let's talk about .NET and Java. And then let's push Python to the side because Python has a different use case. So like in Python and data science, that's the language of choice there. When we're talking about building web apps um, and you're comparing .NET to Spring, .NET is probably, I don't know, it's stupidly fast. So it's a lot faster. I think the tool getting faster better. every year. Yeah. Those now, .NET 7 things that we keep seeing the, 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 yeah. the specs for Inter are like lightning fast. Yeah. Interesting enough, you know, uh, Azure, um, they had a MS build this week and Azure just released a thing for running Spring Boot and Spring Apps and it's called Azure Spring Apps natively and trying to make those things run better and make it easier to deploy them to, um, to Azure. So I do think that Microsoft has a vested interest in all of these technologies. They're there are a lot of things on the Python side. Obviously, Spring Apps is surprising to me that they even did that, but now they have yeah. a specialized thing that allows you to push that. But I can tell you this right now, .NET 7, um, going forward to .NET 8, they are focusing on performance, tooling, and running this thing anywhere. And I, I just think that when you look at what they're doing, they're going to win this market. Um, when you look at building web apps and building native applications because of their no one is investing the amount of effort into the tooling and the languages that they are. So, and I don't even respond to a lot of the questions again on YouTube. Someone says, Microsoft doesn't even build their own apps in .NET. I'm like, and then they point out this one use case at this one <laughs> business department that built something with Electron. I'm like, right. yeah, when they built that with Electron, Blazor didn't exist. Like, so yes, they have a native app, you know, things like that. And so, and also Microsoft is I don't know, 50, 100,000 people. I don't know how many people work there, but also the departments are all organized as their own little countries. Yeah. And so, yeah, they they use everything to build everything, you know? So um, I don't think that uh, you can say that's the case. Now, the enterprise is going to really adopt .NET 6 and 7 because of the speed performance that you can get just by changing over from .NET 5 or 4. And it definitely runs circles around Java in most use cases. So. Yep. Hashtag not paid by Microsoft. Hashtag not, not an ad. Yet. Hashtag <laughs> Just, not paid by Microsoft. Yet. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Still looking yeah. for you to call me. But like, you know, but Python, um, and I'm not a data science expert, but Python is still winning the day in Python. And there's a lot of things called PyTorch that they're really advocating at Microsoft Build this week too, of all the types of things that Azure and the AI and data science and the cloud is doing. It's pretty remarkable about what they're doing. And when you think, that Microsoft is going to lose. You need to really pay attention to what they're actually doing and stop reading, you know, the random guy on Reddit who doesn't like Microsoft and, you know, still thinks Bill <laughs> Gates in charge of the company. You know, um, it's just, it's just groundbreaking what they're doing. Um, there's two clouds out there, AWS and Azure, and they're competing hard uh, at both of those things. And I think that's good for us as developers building yep. things. Yep. Just to clarify, yeah. we're aware there's a third. We just don't. Well, I mean, when you look at count. Google Cloud, I mean, you know, when they had the reports early in the year, Google Cloud doesn't make money. It still loses money. And we're, and we're thinking, how is that possible? I mean, like <laughs> right. Azure and AWS are making a hand over fist. Yeah. You know, I know yeah, that. What are they um, doing over there? They, yeah, they, I don't know what they're doing. Like, I, they, they haven't they, got traction. Well, we talked about this before. They're using it more internally, aren't they? It powers yeah, YouTube. So. Like, it powers mm -hmm. their own internal applications. It and makes sense. It powers and Google. Yeah, exactly. And all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, while we're on the topic of talking about build, a um, yep. couple of things, couple of things from build to talk about to kind of finish up here. There's a couple of interesting things. One was the store, which they don't really talk about here. They talk about this uh, yeah. easy way to restore apps, which is interesting. <clears throat> but the other thing there, they're opening it up more, right, for developers, which was cool. Yeah. So, are they going to win at the store level? Is the win? They've tried this multiple times. I don't know. Yeah. But hey, if you got a good Windows idea, maybe you could put it out there and maybe you could find some traction there. Yeah. Probably a lot less confrontation in the Google Play and then Apple, in the Apple App Store. Yep. yep. <coughs> but um, the most exciting was this one. This one, um, this so, one to me was. Yeah. As, a, as an M1 Mac owner, this one to me, I was like, oh, hold on a minute. This is a, an ARM version of Studio 22 and, and a mini PC, but more along the line, look, 
an ARM version of .NET 6, an ARM yep. version of VS Code, and Visual Studio and Java 2022, and Java. This, to me, just tells you that we're going to get an M1 version, a working M1 version of a development environment. That's, that's what this tells me. Yeah. Well, that's Cloudbox. So if you go back up there, um, you go back a little bit. They've also made Developer Cloud, and so they're oh yeah yeah the um, um yeah yeah that was on the yeah, yeah on this thing here. This is cloud yeah, so it's basically you log into this thing, and it's a complete dev environment already configured, and you can configure it based on what your company wants. So it's kind of inside. Now, is it fast? I have no idea if it's fast. Is it is it usable? I have no idea. Right. So if you have, but if you have ten gig fiber to your to your office. I got a feeling it's it's probably pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but but if you want it local, look at this arm thing. I mean, like it's kind of cool. You can stack them. You know, you can stack them up on your desk. Yeah, you it's interesting. To. See, this to me, this is this is Microsoft's answer to the Mac Studio. This is the yeah. small desktop and, and like <laughs> like footprint, but yeah, it has to be powerful, right? Because the, yep. the the M1 based Mac stuff that that that, that Mac Studio not only is it small, it's crazy powerful it's blowing pcs out of the water like yeah it's so super powerful so this thing has they to didn't be release, that. we don't know they didn't release specs on it but like yeah. you you can see that you can be able to run android apps natively inside this without emulation um hopefully they can get to where you can run an app uh, from apple in there natively i don't know that's yeah. licensing but, but these but these arm versions Linux of, of apps runs in are it. what's gonna these arm versions yeah. of the apps are what's gonna make ultimately Hopefully, the M1 Mac stuff have an ARM version of Windows, which is currently, you can get it right now, but it's a preview version. So you're going to have an yep. actual version of that and the apps correctly set up, including .NET 6 environment and Visual Studio. It tells me that they're thinking about people that do have a Mac with this ARM-based um, M1 architecture, and they want Windows developers to be able to develop on it. So yep. right now, it's not the best it's just not yeah the, it's, it's emulation it's, so yeah so yeah i thought that was uh pretty interesting pretty interesting pretty interesting the interesting thing from microsoft Go for me anyway all right well let's answer one more question for the road here it's already one o'clock time flies when you're having fun you know so like kind of <laughs> interesting yeah let me <clears> see um talk about this We'll talk about this a, a little bit, but Guitar Jam says one of my main problems I'm having is coming up with a logic to solve leak code problems. If I look at the answers, it makes sense, but I can't recreate it. How do you get better at solving? Keep practicing, man. Yeah, you'll start Keep to notice practicing. patterns, but also think yeah. about why why are you doing these two and how much of this do you need to know? That's the other thing you need to ask yeah. yourself too. Yeah. So like you don't keep spend practicing. all your time doing this. Yeah. Keep practicing. Um, try to build them out. If you can understand them, you can ask yourself three questions. You can ask yourself, what is the inputs? What is the output? And then roughly, what is my logic? What, what is it trying to do? And, and try to not think about code at that point. And if you can start making sense of those three problems, I think you can get it. Yeah, if you can pseudo code yeah. kind of think the logic part through, you, you yep. will start to notice there's definite patterns to those there's, there's yeah and they also come in like categories so you're gonna have so that, know, yeah, right that's what i'm saying problems, there's right exactly there's categories problems, with, yep you know yep. primitive yep. problems which is like things around strings and integers and then you'll see if you if you look at them enough there's a finite set of what people's asking right now so i think most of the ones they're going to ask sure. you if you're going for an entry-level job are not going to be from the advanced section they're going right. to ask you one of the mm -hmm. ones that is in the top 20 like asked questions anyway. So yeah. you don't have to know them all. Then there's the pathfinding section, which if you're going for a web job, I would just avoid those. They don't really matter. I mean, like you don't ever do that. Like someone could ask it. I don't know why they would, but like I push those down to the side. Um, binary tree would be the third one. And I would look at array problems and the other ones around in and around primitive, especially if you're just starting out. So they may ask you like, Hey, can you find the maximum value in this array? Can you sort this object by a particular property? Can you, um, I don't know, find all the vowels in a string, those kind of things, which is on in and around the same problem. I have an array of something. Can I search it, filter it, you know, yep. make it, change it, add to it, delete yep. it. And then once you get all those, you can probably solve up uh, like 
a good 80% of these easy ones. Easy. And that's where your kind of framework around thinking about the input, yeah. your array input, like what do they expect the output yeah. to be? And then think the logic through yeah. how do I get from A to B? Yeah. Thank you, man. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah. Thank you for the super chat. Super appreciate chat. it. Yeah. Taco cats okay, today. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, so we have changed up our schedule a little bit. We're doing Thursdays now. So we'll be back again, uh, next, next Thursday. Thursday. So in the meantime, we are putting out other content onto the platform too. We put out onto YouTube. We put out a new video, uh, what did you do, yesterday, yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. So you'll see, you'll see a video from us in the week, at least one, sometimes maybe two, and then you'll see, uh, our live every Thursday at the same time. So we'll be back yeah. this time next week. And don't forget our course or enter our giveaway there. Um, once we reach a hundred thousand, yep. we will, uh, give away a big prize to someone. So I promise you can scan this. It's safe. Promise. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> um, yeah. So we're, we're on our way to that. Um, also if you want to check us out online, learn.codefinder.com. It's been up there the whole check time. Us out. We can, we can All right. Guide them on it as such. Yeah. Uh, and we'll see you guys next, uh, Thursday. See you next Thursday. Good luck. Keep coding. We'll see you.